just like the look of it, all right. So I've been making really the Bachman coach uh, skits for about a year now, so now I'm going to answer some questions. Where do you get your inspiration for story writing? Mostly books. Other times it's bits of uh, bits of information I pick up here and there, and sometimes it's videos I see on YouTube. Uh, security for Oli kind of came out of nowhere after seeing uh, news footage of uh, broken parcels littering that stretch of mainline. Rolly in the coal mine was based on something my dad told me about narrow gauge in Newfoundland. A Newfoundland uh, narrow gauge in North America is only narrow gauge by definition, really. It's still big, and the way they would go about regaging is sort of like how it happens in the skit. Only um, it would happen on a single dual gauge line. They just detach the standard gauge bogies, roll them out, roll in the narrow gauge, and attach them. But I couldn't make a dual gauge line, so I had to have them lifted off the standard and moved over to the narrow. How long does it take to make an episode? About a weekend. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Have you ever thought of using proper ballast in your episodes? It's too messy, it takes too long to set up and too long to clean up. So what I use instead is strips of masking tape with sand on them, on the sticky side. Easier to lay up, easier to pull off. And that's why you most, almost exclusively only see straight track. Um, I've been thinking of ways I could... <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen. Will you ever make another wooden railway video? Maybe, yeah. I've got pretty much the whole cast of Tales from the Other Railway, so I might do something similar to Bowler Bewitched. You might have given me an idea, actually. Will there be longer episodes in the future, like four minutes or more? I have one idea for an episode that could take longer than uh, longer than usual, like probably around four minutes. But uh, the, there's a couple of problems with it. I'm inclined to short, snappy programming. That's these are more skits than episodes. And uh, the longer uh, the longer the video is, the longer it takes to put together, film and edit. And, uh, that's, uh, that's why I try to, I, I'm more inclined to shorter, snappier programming. It's easier to get it all done and churn out as much, um, me, uh, material as possible and, you know, just leaves your audience wanting more. How annoying is it that Hit never did any stories besides debut episodes with new characters? It sounds annoying when Hit introduces a character and then we never see them again apart from cameos here and there, but uh, the Audrey's did this a lot. George, Bulgy, uh, they were gonna, they were one-offs. Oh, George was in uh, Thomas Comes Home, though. And Bear never did anything past his debut. But yeah, they were all nothings, uh, the hit characters they introduced. Out of all hit-era characters in CGI, who should have returned? Does it matter? All those people whining about bringing Boko back, they would have fucked up with him like they fucked up with everybody else they brought back. Duck, Daisy, Duncan. I remember all the Captain Positives back when season 10 was coming about. Oh, Sir Handel's back, they brought Sir Handel's back, they're listening to it. They fucked up with him like they fucked up with everybody else. I was like, why is he, why is he the oldest character in this, uh, in the narrow gauge circle? No, no, we did our homework. He was built in the 1870s. Uh, did you see when Scarlo and Reneas were built? A quick Google search doesn't qualify as research. Whatever happened to Demolition Birdie? I think uh, Rolly and Grabby sums it up. Like I said before, uh, longer videos take longer to make, and sure enough, this was filming and editing for this was taking forever, and uh, a lot of stuff had changed. I started altering my models. He still got the mustache from Rolly's facial hair, yeah. I, uh, I couldn't take the white running boards anymore, so I painted them black, and I accepted shapeways into my life, and I started using changeable faces. So it would have been a lot to, uh, reshoot and it, it wasn't worth it so I made Rolly and Grabby and I issued an apology to all the voice actors who submitted lines for that. I basically just turned the climax of that story into a skit. Out of all the episodes of Rolly the Bachman Coach you've made, which one was the hardest? When I was making the blooper reel I was going through my external drive and checking all the extra footage I had and I had no memory of getting frustrated with Grabby here and slamming him into the table. So if I had a hard time at the time I, I don't I don't remember it. My cat's running around. Because uh, I, I was I was worried when I was when I started filming that I was worried that the scene with the face falling off was gonna be hard, but it just happened to come off while I was filming that bit with the him lifting Rolly, and I thought, oh, I don't have to I don't have to deliberately film that bit. I remembered uh, being I remember some some foreboding when I was filming 
Ro uh, Rolly's escape, but uh, it, overall it was fine. The hardest episode to make for me was Ro uh, Rolly at the works, because I had microphone problems, and I just couldn't figure out what the what was the problem. And uh, and I I lost I lost my temper, and I lost. I lost my, I lost a party hat in my fit of temper. I had this, uh, some time ago, Pizza Pizza had um, their 50th anniversary and they were giving away these party hats uh, to that effect. And uh, I used mine as a microphone cozy, you know, to keep the dust off of it. And uh, in a fit of rage when I was having trouble with it, my microphone. I uh, ripped it to shreds. And, uh, I, I was pretty fucked up. I, I gave up on trying to figure out what was wrong with the microphone. I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a skit go up with a bad recording. And I managed to get some sleep after that. And I woke up and I saw it. That, that episode was the highest rated in one day. I, it had, in one day it had got over 10,000 views and the next day it shot up past 20,000 and uh, that lifted me right out of my uh, my stay of depression so thank you my beloved audience oh that fucking hat what inspired you to make your own Rolly the Coach episodes? Mostly the missing coach leaks. As soon as I saw they hadn't used a uh, red and cream express coach, but rather an ordinary orange branch line coach, I immediately thought of Rolly. I'd always liked those skits, but uh, I just thought it would be funny if to make a Rolly was the missing coach joke. I made I made one uh, sometime around the time those leaks had come out. It was kind of a stupid one and it was badly edited. I, I always thought, you know, uh, I'd like to do that, but at the time I was n nowhere. I wouldn't have touched modeling with a barge, barge pole. Anyway, I remember I just had this random idea that I really wanted to film and make an homage. I remember a April of last year, I, I didn't sleep. I, I just didn't sleep. I don't know why. I'd lie, I'd lie in bed for 18 hours and not get a drop of sleep. So I'd lie around watching videos sometimes, and one of the one cluster of videos I came upon were a bunch of uh, Leo Kim video um, demonstrations for modeling effects and one of them was for uh, fog chilling. So I tried getting into that a little bit and with, with those two things in mind I just wanted to make an homage to Leo, Leo Henry and uh, Paul H. So I made uh, Rolly and Scruffy and uh, I had reservations about uh, pursuing this as a skit show because I figured I'd just be ripping off Paul H. But I decided, well, I could always uh, take a page from uh, Captain Punjab's book, and I just uh, I just called it Rolly the Bachman Coach. And I thought, well, I, if I'm going to do this, I'm not going to take a Clarabelle model and edit that every time. i got to make a tangible Bachman Rolly. And so I fished around on the internet for uh, ways to remove the name and tinker with the face, and I saw somebody using enamel thinner. So I used, uh, so I got some of that and it worked. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this then. How did you make those nameplates, like in Rolly's Find and the headboards, like in Rolly and Gordon and Rolly's Escape? And it's a combination of decals printed on yellow paper and double-sided scotch tape. I got a uh, little Douglas here, a uh, body shell by T-Doc and a face by Rexecutions. I got the larger scale uh, body shell and the smaller scale faces, by the way, so it looks a little more like a smoke box door. It's still pretty big but uh, looks better than the face being the same uh, diameter as the smoke box. It still kind of bothers me with the standard gauge engines to be honest. So I'll just briefly demonstrate uh, how I go about this uh, task. Just cut out a little piece, take a piece of double-sided scotch tape out and uh, stick it on the back. Now for the tricky part. A little too big, but I'll just, it's just a demonstration. I'll stick it on this uh, screwdriver here. I'll just uh, pop it on. And that 
that's that's the low tech way I go about making name boards and headboards. What's the name of the traction engine who tried to steal the 20 minute cut of Warrior? Uh, this is uh, Morris, the showman's engine. He's always on the hunt for uh, rare pieces of media. A long time ago, one of his conquests was uh, the Star Wars Christmas special, which everybody has a copy of by now. Uh, at the moment, uh, he has his uh, sights on uh, the extra 30 minutes of Goodfellas that would have made uh, that movie X-rated and uh, the raw dialogue recordings of the Sailor Mouth episode of Spongebob. Uh, his dynamo here is not just, doesn't just generate electricity, it's also a uh, film projector. So yeah, he has uh, bootleg screenings on the side. Where did you get those plastic coupling chains? These came from some Lego set, I don't know what one, it had like a drawbridge when it might have been a castle or something. So I just snipped them to whatever length I want. And hang them on whatever piece of uh, rolling stock I have. Which Thomas the Tank Engine or Railway Series character do you find the most relatable? Thomas, I guess. I know people argue Gordon has the more potent maturity arc, but uh, there's a difference. Gordon starts out as a big shot. He's all that. He's a tested high performance top length thoroughbred. So there's, there, there is some things to back up the boastfulness. Whereas Thomas is just an average Joe. He's a common shunter, and uh, I think it's a lot more powerful when uh, the main character goes through the, this maturity arc, and a big part of maturing is realizing and accepting that the world doesn't revolve around you. So, as the show goes on, he gets less focus, but his name's still in the title of the show. Between classic series and railway series Henry, which do you prefer and why? I don't know, they fucked up with both. And I'm not talking about the special coal thing. I'm talking about the splashers. In season two, for some reason, Henry got his splashers back. That always annoyed me. Favorite single wheeler locomotives? Drummond's Bug, maybe? I'm not a big fan of single wheelers. Castles or kings? Neither. Manners. Which extinct class of locomotive are you saddest we lost? Given what I've read about the Granges, I'm surprised none survived. Relima loved them. So I'll be stoked when Benton Grange uh, gets out shopped. If I had to pick a class of engine that there's not currently a known new build project for. Uh, maybe not so much a class. I don't know if it was a class. I don't know if it was offered in any Barclay catalogs, but uh, Chevalier from the uh, Camelton Macri Inch Light Railway. As far as new build projects go, narrow gauge is kicking standard gauge's ass. Not only do we got factory fresh Linton or Barnstable engines now, narrow gauge, in narrow gauge circles, we got new builds of classes that do have representatives in preservation. We got a new Keir Stewart tattoo on top of two survivors. We've got a brand new Bagnell Jesse on top of two survivors. What's the name of the traction engine the burglars used? His name is Morris, and technically he was using the burglars. The burglars weren't really using him. He's always on the hunt for uh, people who can help him steal stuff, and uh, they're not hard to find. He just finds some media gluttons. I remember when uh, the US dub of, the, of Sunshine got leaked, I'm like, we were angry that they were <laughs> keeping this from us? <laughs> Captain Star sounded like he was in the John. I'm just gonna say it, I'm glad Tugs didn't get a legitimate US dub. Nobody would have taken the main antagonist of the series seriously if they were called the Z Stacks. I can't even say that without cringing. What's your opinion on the new wooden railway? I haven't been keeping up. As far as I know, they've been trying to get the fi configurations right. I guess that's worth something. How did Rolly move on his own in Rolly's Escape? A combination of a favorable gradient and sheer naked desperation. Think Gary avoiding the bathtub and Gary takes a bath. That's uh, Spongebob like, episode. How did Henry's ultrasound go? It went well. The only crack they found was in one of his, um, uh, running plate brackets. Will you make more bad manner reviews? As much as I like to talk about Thomas and Railway related stuff, making reviews just in editorials just isn't my thing, I'm a fiction guy. Sorry. Will Paul's vids knows you? I have no idea if Paul H is aware of this series or not. What's the funniest Rolly episode you made? Personally, I get a kick out of uh, Rolly Leaves the Works the most. I remember I got, you can probably see it over there, the, I have my um, Thomas with a straight running plate uh, body shell, and it came with a separate roof, and I was just playing with that. I was just blowing it, blowing it off. I thought, okay, I got a skit, so I'll have uh, his crew cooking sausages, and uh, they don't poke holes in them, so poof. 
Would you be making more Thomas films apart from Rolly the Buckman coach? Um, I think I'll take this opportunity to let you know I'm going to be taking a break for the summer from Rolly the Bachman coach. Uh, a couple reasons. One, the fog chilling effect doesn't work very well in uh, the summer heat, even when I'm down here in the basement. Uh, the fog chilling effect isn't sustainable for very long. And uh, there are other things I need to do. I need to take pictures for the thumbnails for my next batch of uh, Sir Tom Matt's Railway uh, audio book, uh, story narrations. Um, I got some uh, distant hill backdrop backdrops to uh, set up. I think you can see it in the corner. You know that hour-long video of uh, the water mill at uh, night and every so often an engine goes by? I kind of want to make my own version of that. The water mill set is my favorite. I also made inroads into uh, making a version of Thomas Goes Fishing with as many narrators as possible. Uh, I, I, hit a I hit a snag very quickly though. Uh, I want to have Michael Angelis being the voice of Sir Topham Hatt, but in his narration of that story, uh, at the end of it there's that music, ending music, and I can't remove it without distorting, warping the the uh, the quality of the voice recording. So unless I can find substitutes for his dialogue, uh, that's that's going to be on the back burner. I, I really wanted to have a go at that, but uh, that was a snag. And I also want to put together a demo book featuring uh, this guy. Those of you who's been following the links might know of uh, a storybook style series I have on uh, one of my DeviantArt pages called A Stray Terrier. I want to put together a demo book of a conceptually similar sort of storybook and uh, potentially find a publisher. Maybe just a pie-in-the-sky dream, but I want to have a go at putting together a demo. I tend to recommence other weekly Rolly the Bachman coach skits in early September. I'll be spending the summer doing other things. Some weathering, some backdrop stuff, photos for other things. So that's what the rethought Rolly was for. It's a farewell for the summer. And during that time, uh, maybe some other uh, Thomas and Railway related films will come out. Oh, and I want, I want to experiment with uh, some more effects in, uh, some more video editing effects. Uh, last month I had my first go at uh, chroma keying, you may have seen in my Pioneer's Ghost uh, video. So I want to experiment with that a little more. Have you heard of Choo Choo Charles? Nope. How do you get the ideas for the Rolly episodes? Most of the ideas for stories I, in general, come from books. What do I got here? I got uh, Steam Power and Agriculture, Buck Jumpers, Gobblers and Clods, Campbellton and Macrianish Light Railway, Northeast Scrapyards, Toss of a Coin, Autobiography, or Railway Career. I recommend uh, if you want to try to get into the real thing. If you're a Thomas fan and you want to get into the real thing, start with this. It's by David Maidment, the railway consultant from Season 5. The Runaway Smash Through Crossing Gates Just Missing a Bus. The Age of the Traction Engine, Metropolitan Steam Locomotives, Leader in Experimental Southern Steam, Cambrian Railways, Alligators of the North, Gentlemen of the Harbor, Stories of Chesapeake Bay Tugboats and Crews, Bester Military Railway, and a lot of others in another room. Will you remake a railway series story? Like I said, I'm working on a version of Thomas Goes Fishing with as many narrators as possible, playing various individual parts. Over on my other channel, uh, A Stray Terrier, uh, I have uh, Sir Tom Hatt's Railway with a lot of with a blend of railway series, TV series, and original stories. If there's anything I've learned from uh, Batman the Animated Series and Belated Media's rewrites of the Star Wars prequels, it's that there absolutely is room for drastic retcons. Fuck purism. Do you have any more ideas for Rolly? Yeah, quite a few. Rolly and the Coal Mine had been uh, on the on my idea board since I started the show, but for various reasons it kept getting pushed back. Others uh, came out of nowhere, like uh, Rolly's Escape, uh, Rolly and the Anoraks, security for Rolly, those ideas came completely out of nowhere. I've got plenty on my idea board now. Uh, one concern I have though is uh, some of them feature characters who don't have face packs on Shapeways uh, uh, at the time of recording. Like Duck, Oliver, them. Oliver was in the last episode I put in, but he's hard to see. He's in auto-train formation with Isabel, so I'm not too sure how uh, they're gonna fare. What was the joke in Rolly's escape? There was a goddamn hashtag on the headboard. The scenario Topham describes in that story, like, I, I hope that was the case. Fortunately, I've since seen uh, videos of the Talicum being much more creative when it comes to drawing a bigger crowd. Like, uh, I saw Doldock wearing uh, jack-o'-lanterns like express headboards. I'm like, that's the way you do it. Be creative, not trendy.
What's your favorite cheese? Gouda. Why did you upload this at 3.28 in the morning? It was around that time the video was done rendering. Well, thanks for submitting questions and uh, thanks for watching uh, my program. If you can call it my program, it's a ripoff. And thanks for pulling me out of my uh, state of misery uh, after uh, the hard time I had filming, uh, filming and putting together Roly at the Works. You, you guys really cheered me up by, with, the, with the view count there. I thought I was going to have a bad episode go up and hopefully it won't alienate too many people, but it was the highest rated episode at the time. And I just thought, wow, people like, people like it that much. I, I guess I don't feel miserable anymore. I still wish I hadn't lost my temper and ripped off that hat. So uh, I guess I'll uh, see you in September.